Recently, International Ozone Day was observed on 16th September for the preservation of ozone layer. Though this day is celebrated every year, so there is nothing new to know about it. But what is concerning and what we should know about our planet and ourself is important. That's what I will tell you in this video. So please be with this video till last. The ozone layer a fragile shield of gas protects the earth from the harmful portion of the rays of the sun thus helping preserve life of the planet okay so this is a simple definition which is known to all of us that it protects the earth we human beings plants animals every living creature from the harmful uv rays which are coming from the sun so what's new let's see the vast majority of ozone sits in the stratosphere it is an atmospheric layer above our planet's surface. Ozone makes up roughly 0.00006% of the atmosphere and its peak concentration is present at 32 km above the surface of the earth. That means surface where we live in an area known as the ozone layer. So if there is an area called ozone layer in the stratosphere which is 32 km above from the surface of the earth according to the NASA. At that height, ozone absorb intense ultraviolet radiations streaming in from the sun. So the sun is, you know, emitting UV rays all the time, all the time in the daytime. Okay. When we are facing the sun, when the earth is facing the sun. Without this layer, now the question is without this layer, just imagine without this layer, what will happen on the earth's surface? Without this layer, the ground on earth would be sterilized and life as we know it wouldn't be possible you know everything will just get boiled it will just get cleaned or cleansed totally by due to burning and the life which we see on this earth a pleasant life a blissful life you won't be able to see that ozone is a relatively unstable substance and can be destroyed by molecules containing nitrogen hydrogen chlorine or bromine these chemicals rip ozone's third oxygen atom away from its two partners. Yes, there are a combination of three molecules of oxygen and the formula for ozone is O3. And these chemicals, nitrogen, hydrogen, chlorine and bromine, just throw it away, take it away, the, take away the third molecule of this oxygen. This thing started in 1950s. When scientists began measuring ozone concentration above Antarctica in the South Pole, giving them their first hints that there is some problem with the ozone layer. In 1987, aircraft observations provided unaccessible evidence that the ozone hole was being created by human made pollutants called chlorofluorocarbons. Yes. They were, you know, they were stunned at how this happened. This is a natural phenomena. Uh, who is responsible? To whom to make responsible? Okay, the responsibility came on the shoulders of humans. Who? Why? Because they are polluting. They are emitting such gases from the surfaces, from the devices, from the industries for their selfish purpose. And this is harming the upper layer in the stratosphere called the ozone, which is protecting us. Chlorine and bromine which are present in chlorofluorocarbons, commonly known as CFCs, are related compounds, are highly destructive to ozone. A single chlorine atom can rupture more than 1 lakh ozone molecules before it leaves the stratosphere. Just see the intensity. And this is according to the US Environment Protection Agency report. CFCs, that means chlorofluorocarbons, come from industrial processes like refrigeration, which is very common and are used in fire suppression and foam insulation, etc. In 1987, countries around the world signed the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. Yes, then the world, you know, big world economy, the big world forums just woke up and say, oh my God, it's going on. Let's come and sit, have a meeting. And they made it a Montreal Protocol. On what? On the substances which are depleting. Let's suppress these, these let's end these chemicals said they formed the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. An international document committing signatories to addressing the ozone's hole, according to the Environment Report. People have been trying to phase out chlorofluorocarbons and other harmful industrial pollutants ever since. 
A recent study showed that between 2005 and 2016, there was a 20% drop in the amount of ozone being destroyed by chlorine, so their efforts are started paying. In 2019, the ozone hole over Antarctica shrank to its smallest recorded size. When ozone is present down near the ground, it can be harmful. Now, hey, one thing we have to know that there are two types of ozone. One which is present in the stratosphere, which is protecting us uh, from the harmful UV rays. And one ozone is living with us in troposphere in our surrounding. Yes. When ozone is present down near the ground, it can be harmful. Such ozone also called smog. You might have heard this word in your science subject. This smog is created from oxides of nitrogen and wax emitted by cars, power plants, industrial boilers, refineries and chemical plants combining with other organic molecules in the atmosphere. These are just few examples. Breathing ozone can cause chest pain throat irritation, coughing, and harmful lung tissue. So everything is connected with your breathing system, with your oxygen. Now, we have seen all the technical and basic details about the ozone and the presence of ozone above and with us. Now, let's see, have a brief look over what is a Montreal Protocol. The principal aim of the Montreal Protocol is to protect the ozone layer by taking measures to control total global production and consumption of the substances that deplete it. Okay. In 1994, the United Nations General Assembly proclaimed 16 September the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. So a day was also decided every year to remember that we are also working on the ozone. Commemorating the date of the SIG signing in 1994. 87 of the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. So this was a very to the point and crisp about this ozone, its presence, its condition, who is harming whom, and what is Montreal Protocol and what is world doing. About let's discuss about the different layers of the atmosphere. In brief, an atmosphere is a blanket of gases that surrounds the Earth that we know. The atmosphere contains the air that we breathe. It also helps retain the sun's heat and prevents it from escaping back into the space. Yes, if it is, uh, you know, see, you see just if it is helping and it is avoiding the harmful, you know, uh, rays to enter into the earth atmosphere, then it is also preventing that heat to go into the space. Also, it protects the life from harmful radiation from the sun. Now, let's have a look at the different layers of the atmosphere. There are five different layers uh, in some, uh, you know, text you may find in, in six also. The, but the mainly are troposphere where we live, then there is stratosphere just above the tropo, then above that we have mesosphere, then above that we have thermosphere and uh, above we have the topmost is exosphere. There might be some other including like ionosphere is also there. But I'm just giving a brief introduction to this thing. As we are talking about the ozone and the ozone is present in stratosphere, so I will give a 3-4 line about the stratosphere. Stratosphere is the second layer of the atmosphere found above the troposphere. It extends up to 50 kilometers of height from the surface of the earth. This layer is very dry as it contains little water, water vapor. It provides some advantage for flight because it is above stormy weather and has sturdy, strong horizontal winds. The ozone layer is present in this layer. That's all in today's session. See you soon.